Ness here. In this video, I'm going to talk about gradients. Um, there are three types that are kind of important or good to know about for Procreate. There's this, this is a gradient overlay. And right now I have it on normal mode, but if I change it to something like uh, multiply um, and I have a photo underneath, it applies the overlay to the photo itself, uh, kind of giving it sort of this interesting and dramatic look. Um, so it's a fun thing to use, the gradient overlays, and they're pretty easy to make. So there's the overlay, let's hide that, and then there's something called the gradient map, which is it's kind of new to Procreate, um, but gradient maps have been around uh, with other apps for a while. So what a gradient map is, tap there and apply to later, um, I've got, let's see, Yep, I've got Breeze selected here. What it does is it changes um, your lighting here with color. So in the in the shadows here, we have this really dark blue. We have uh, purples as you start to get into the shadows, but midtones. We have sort of a cyan that's getting into the highlights. And the very highlights, we have um, this sort of off off white color. So that's one application. But let's look at a, a different set of colors. Well, black and white here is kind of obvious. So, you know, you want darker shadows, you can just dial that in. If you want to adjust the midtones, make them either darker or lighter, um, you slide this, uh, the middle slider here. And if you want to adjust the highlights, you can really blow them out by pulling them in here. So it's adjusting the curve. So again, this is, this is about light. So gradient map has to do with color and light. Oftentimes when I'm doing poster work, I'll have some sort of pattern and um, I want it to be subtle and in the background or just parts of it visible. So I find that I use the um, layer mask with a gradient quite a bit because oftentimes, you know, I've got a title here and info here. So I want to, you know, keep this less busy up here and less busy down here because, you know, usually it's pretty hard to see and there's lots of info information. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. So with the layer that I want to hide part of the, that pattern layer, I'm going to tap it and tap it again and select mask. And it's really pretty cool because it lets me have a lot of control over what's visible on this layer. So let's go ahead and um, make invisible with black, the upper parts here. So I'm just going to draw a nice black line across here and then fill it. And then I'm going to draw a nice black line right around here and fill it. Okay, and again, it's not on the layer itself, it's on the mask. So it's really just hiding. Um, and gray, by the way, is a different level of, uh, of transparency. So you can use gray, white, and black. So. Okay, so now with the layer mask still selected, I'm going to go over here to my adjustments and I'm going to select Gaussian Blur. And then I'm just going to dial it till I'm satisfied. So that actually is already looking pretty, pretty good, but I can even make it blend even more, become more of a gradient. So really concentrated down here and really not concentrated up here. But I tend to like some part of it to be really, really showy and vibrant, like, like it has light. So I would probably dial Gaussian blue to somewhere around 50 to 60 percent. That's just just how I usually would use it. So that's one way to use it. But now let's look at the other example, which is our photograph, because that's probably where I use it the most. So I have this photo and while I have, you can see pretty well the, the foreground here, I, I'm sort of disappointed because the sky is a little blown out. So I'd like to bring back some of the details of that sky. And one of the things I know about photography is that if I create a, a duplicate of this and then I multiply the two layers together, it does a good job of bringing back details in the sky. Only problem is I now have this all darkened as well. And I didn't want that. I, I want to see the details that are there. So while the sky feels pretty good, the, the closer ground does not. So I want to use a, a layer mask with a gradient to, uh, to just show me part of the correction and not the whole thing because I, I only need it for the sky and not the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and go uh, to that layer and I'm going to uh, tap it and select mask, mask. And again, white is where it's revealed and 
black will be where it's hidden. But I am actually going to reverse this so I can just play with this guy. And so I'm going to invert it. And now everything is hidden. So I'm going to bring back something. Um, so I'm going to use white for my color here. And again, just using that calligraphy pen. And I'm going to draw really close to the edge, but not to the edge. And it just really keeps it easy, simple. And then I'm going to drop the color in there. And that's all you have to do to get it ready. And then you go back over to the Gaussian Blur. Oh, OK. And that can go pretty fast. So you just kind of want to see and make sure that nothing is happening to the edges around that here. You know, you want this to be a nice, gentle blend. Um, but you don't want to not do enough that um, you can see that something was going on artificially. So that, like this sort of haloing that's going on. So you want to make sure you do this effect to the point where the haloing disappears. And so again, I think it's somewhere around 50 to 60% is usually pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and go a little bit further. There we go. 54. And so that's, that's pretty good. And when I'm satisfied, I can tap out. And so let's look at this um, with, the, with the fix. So before and after. Here, let's bring this down so you can see it. But the sky with the fix and the sky without. So definitely brings back details and makes this picture far more dramatic. Um, and so, you know, th that's why uh, a lot of photographers use this to get the higher dynamic range that our eyes can see but our, our cameras actually can't catch. So um, anyway, these are the three different gradients that people care about when it comes to Procreate and all sorts of art projects, whether it's making posters or um, illustrations or photography. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you're notified when new videos become available. Meanwhile, I hope your day is amazing.